So on night one of the first 2020 Democratic Party primary debate, we had what seemed to be a death blow. Tulsi Gabbard dismantled Tim Ryan in such a thorough and embarrassing way that that moment may have single-handedly tanked his campaign. Now, I did not think that lightning would strike twice. I didn't think we'd get the same moment in night two, but we did. And this moment surprisingly came from Kamala Harris, who called out Joe Biden, rightfully so, for recently talking about how personable segregationists were. Now, she started by sharing why she was bothered by the way he talked about segregation. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. As Attorney General of California, I was very proud to put in place a, a requirement that all my special agents would wear body cameras and keep those cameras on. So that was really powerful. She shared her personal story. She called out Joe Biden specifically because he worked with segregationists to oppose busing, which is huge. That's a big deal. You're not teaming up with segregationists to stop a war or something. You're teaming up with them to do segregation. You're a segregationist. So she hit him on that, and that was really important. It was a powerful moment. His response? Crash and burn. He denied it, and he didn't have a good response. And they butted heads, and she absolutely got the better of him here. It's a mischaracterization of my position across the board. I did not praise racist. That is not true, number one. Number two, if we want to have this campaign litigated on who supports civil rights and whether I did or not, I'm happy to do that. I was a public defender. I didn't become a prosecutor. I came out and I left a good law firm to become a public defender when, in fact, when, in fact, when in fact my city was in flames because of the, the uh, assassination of Dr. King. Number one. No, number two, as the U.S. as excuse me, as the uh, uh, vice president of the United States, I work with a man who, in fact, we worked very hard to see to it we dealt with these issues in a major, major way. The fact is that in terms of busing, the busing, I never, you would have been able to go to school the same exact way because it was a local decision made by your city council. That's fine. That's one of the things I argued for, that we should not be, we should be breaking down these lines. But so the bottom line here is, look, everything I've done in my career, I ran because of civil rights. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African-Americans, but the LGBT community. But they, Vice President Biden, do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I oppose. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the, the second class to integrate Berkeley, the, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's why we need to pass the Equality Act. That's why we need to pass the ERA, because that's there right. are moments in history where states fail to preserve the civil rights of all people. Supported the okay. ER. That moment right there was so strong. That's going to bring Joe Biden down potentially in the polls substantially. All the other candidates should send Kamala a thank you card. 
because she may have just single-handedly taken down a frontrunner. Now, you know, he was already starting to nosedive when it comes to polling and support, but that right there was just, that was brilliant. You've got to give her credit where it's due. That was a political maneuver that was so strong, so powerful, that I don't know how Joe Biden would have been able to respond to that. I mean, if I was instructing Joe Biden, what I would say is, you have to apologize. Don't be defensive. Don't deny. Just apologize. But he's a narcissist like Donald Trump, so he's incapable of introspection, and he would never admit to any wrongdoing. And he did that. And he was so flustered, so unable to defend himself. What he did was cut himself off. Not kidding. I agree that everybody wants to stay in fact, they should, anyway, my time's up, I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice President. All of Yikes. Now, as I said in the full debate breakdown that I did, if you are a candidate like Joe Biden, it behooves you to not say very much, you know, because people don't like you when they hear what you have to say. So to maintain that lead, you've got to try to remain quiet most of the time. But the caveat is if you are defending yourself, you absolutely should not stop talking. You run out the clock. He cut himself off and said, I'm out of time. Embarrassing. Completely embarrassing. Kamala Harris absolutely destroyed Joe Biden. And I suspected that somebody would call him out on the stage because of his support for segregationists and his, you know, fond memories of individuals like James Eastland, who is just explicitly racist and just was a garbage person. I thought that it was possible somebody would call him out, but I wasn't sure that they would be able to do it in a way that was powerful and effective. Kamala did just that. And it wasn't just this moment that made her stand out. I mean, her performance overall was great. So she's one to look out for because regardless if you support her or not, she is a powerful debater and a great speaker. And she's going to use that to her advantage. And, um... What she did here to Joe Biden was just masterful. It's something that anyone who's getting into politics should watch and study because that's how you take down a political behemoth. You call them on their bullshit and you leave them in a position where they're so damaged that they can't defend themselves.